Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video I'm going to be testing out some new Kiko makeup that I picked up. A couple of videos ago I uploaded my Kiko, my big Kiko haul video and I did get requests to use some of these products and test them out and stuff so that is what I'm going to be doing today. Um, I won't be able to test all of the products that I purchased um, because if you did watch it, if you haven't I will, I will link it down below but if you have watched it you'll see I had a lot of stuff um, but I have planned a whole bunch of Christmas makeup looks so I will be incorporating a lot of it into those makeup looks so if you don't see anything so if something doesn't get used today that I purchased then you will de probably definitely see it in future videos throughout this month so I have no idea what kind of makeup look I'm deciding to do, so I'm just going to jump straight into it. Okay, so like I said, I wanted to test out one of the foundations. I picked up two. I've already tested the skin tone foundation on a different day. I didn't do it in the video, but I did do it um, shortly after, <coughs> a week ago. And I have to say, I'm not a fan. I don't. I think it's because of the shade I got. So I got this one in <coughs> Warm Rose, whereas I got this one which is a 2 in 1 in neutral gold and this is just a tad too, too pink of an undertone for me and I didn't enjoy it and it didn't look very nice on my skin it kind of caked up and separated a little bit so um, I'll test that again but it, for now this isn't one that I particularly enjoy so I'm going to be testing out this Skin Modernist 2 in 1 foundation concealer today. So this is the one where it should, it's going to be quite full coverage because it's meant to act as the concealer as well as foundation. So it comes in a box like this. Like I said, I've got mine in neutral gold, so slightly more of a neutral yellow undertone, which is what I prefer. Um, I am going to, I do typically prime my face on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I don't currently have a Kiko... I did have a Kiko primer, I don't at the moment. So I'm going to go in with the In Transit Camera Close Up uh, Moisturiser Mask and Primer from This Works. Um, but I'm only going to do half the face because I want to see how long it tests, how long the foundation lasts with and without a primer. So I'm just going to prime the right side of my face today. So I'm just going to take a small pump of this. Okay, so I'm going to go in the foundation now. So it does come on a big doe for applicator like this. So I'm just going to put, I don't know how much I need, so I'm just going to put a couple of dots on my face. I think I'm going to use a brush for this. So I'm going to use, so I'm going to use my Luxie 530 flat top kabuki brush to blend that all in. This is definitely a full coverage like I expected it to be. It's blending in really nicely, I have to say. I can't see a difference blending wise from the primer side to the non prime side. So, as you could definitely tell on camera, I look a bit scared actually. It's very full coverage. Um, the colour match is okay, it's still, I think this was the lightest one they had, but it's still a little bit too dark for me, which is quite typical for a drugstore, um, well it's not really a drugstore, um, for most foundations, unless it's like really high end, um, because you can see my neck's a lot paler than my face, but that's okay, it, it tends to happen with me, so I just bronze up the neck, so it's not a a massive deal for me. Although I have to say actually with the non-prime side it's not uh, um, sticking to my dry patches as much which is a bit weird so like around my nose here foundation tends to get lodged and a little bit here for some reason. It doesn't seem so bad but on this side in particular this area here it has caked up ever so slightly. Okay, I'm just going to go back in in the areas where I need a little bit more touch up. So I'm going to pop this under my eyes as well because, like I said, it's meant to be a concealer as well. Um, so I'm just going to add a little bit kind of to here. A little bit more on my chin because my chin is just the worst place. Okay, 
Okay, so that's the base done. It's definitely added a lot of coverage under the eyes. Um, definitely sorted out some of my chin. There's still a little bit peeking through because I do have some scarring from spots and stuff like that. But overall, it's pretty good coverage if you're after a full coverage um, foundation. It does give my skin that flawless finish that you'd expect from a full coverage foundation. Um, I am just going to go in and set my usual areas, so more down the T-zone and a little bit under my eyes. That's tend to where I get um, oily, so where makeup kind of usually comes off my face first. So I wasn't I wasn't sure whether I was going to powder or not, but as I usually powder anyway, I just thought I might as well do my routine how I usually would do. Um, so I'm just going, this isn't new, but this is a Kiko product. This is the Radiant Fusion Baked Powder. And like I usually would, I'll just pop some under my eyes. And like always, I'll leave the rest of my skin uh, face unpowdered, um, because that's what I tend to do anyway, because I don't like a powdery look. But it, like I said, it, does, it doesn't feel tacky, so it feels like it's kind of set. Um, so hopefully that will mean it will last a long time. I'm going to move on to the eyes now. Now I picked up, I did pick up two eye primers from Kiko. One is their neutral eye base, one is their pearly eye base. So I'm going to actually use both. Um, I'm going to use the eye, the neutral one more for into the crease and above just to counteract and get rid of any of the blue lines that I have vein wise. And then because I think I'm going to go a little bit shimmery on the lid, I'm just going to pop the pearly one on the lid. Typically I won't I don't use an eye base, I tend to use just concealer, but I thought I would try out eye bases, see if it makes my eyeshadow last a bit longer. And then I'm just going to lightly set the eye base, but I'm only going to set through the crease, as that's typically where things will crease on me and above. I'm going to leave the lid section unset let's do my eyes I know that I will not be using these two palettes that I purchased um, because I have got videos planned um, so I've got a New Year's Eve makeup look plan with this amazing blue smoky palette and I think and I've got another one planned with the um, more Christmas look brown planned with the brownie look so I won't be using those two Day. So I'm going to use some of the single eyeshadows I've got. I think I'd love to do something based around these two colours. These are beautiful colours. So I'm actually going to start with this old eyeshadow of mine from Kiko. It's the Infinity 226. Uh, I'm going to use this as my transition shade. So it's kind of like a salmon-y, salmon pink kind of colour. I'm using this on a new brush of mine. This is from the brand Ruby. I've given it... Um, yeah, and it's just a really pretty, a lovely fluffy brush, perfect for really blend, like blending out, putting a transition shade down. I have to say that eyeshadow has gone on really nicely with the eye bases underneath. I'm going to go with this chocolatey brown colour. This is one of the high pigment eyeshadows in the shade 41. So, yeah, like I said, it's quite a, it's a chocolate brown, matte chocolate brown. Ooh. I'm using a Luxie. 229 tapered blender for this. I'm popping it kind of through the crease but not bringing it quite so high up as I bought the first shade. And I have to say, so far I'm getting zero fallout from this eyeshadow, which is great. And then I'm going to go in with this Kiko. Smart eyeshadow in 16. Um, this is one of the new ones, and I'm going to pack this onto the lid. So I'm using just a flat brush. This. On the outer third of my eye, I'm going to take this high pigment shade in 65, which is a beautiful kind of brown lilac colour which I absolutely love. I'm going to take an angled brush for this and just pack this on the outer corner. 
And then I'm going to go in with this Bright Duo Baked Eye Shadow in 2 2. So it comes with a shimmery, um, very shimmery white and a kind of satin grey black. So I'm going to first of all take the black shade and run this along the upper lash line. So it's definitely more of a grey black eyeshadow because um, it's not very. It's not coming out very black, but I quite like those shades when you want to create a smoky lash line, it works very well I think. There's no fallout with the eyeshadow which is great, I'm just going to take my Kiko pencil brush just to further smoke it out just ever so slightly. And then I just take the white shimmer shade just on my finger and pop this on the inner corner. For the brown brow I want to go in something ever so slightly less intense so I'm taking my old Kiko Infinity 201 shadow and using this because it's kind of like an off-white, not so much shimmer in it. I'll just use this to highlight the brow bone. For the lower lash line I'm going to go back in with that chocolate brown. So this is one of the high pigment eyeshadows that I got on that Kiko pencil brush and just drag it along the lower lash line. I'm going to go with a touch of this, the 6.5 lilac kind of brown colour and also smoke that along the lower lash line. I'm going to run this pencil, this is their Kiko Lasting Precision Automatic Eyeliner and Coal Pencil, My, this is the shade 05. Um, I have got a coppery colour which I've used already and it's really nice but I'm going to go in with this one, it's more of a dark purple kind of colour and pop this on the waterline, in the waterline in fact. Lovely as well, I think it's a really nice colour to pop in the waterline as well because I didn't want black so I didn't want to be really harsh but I wanted some kind of dark colour so that purple is really nice. For mascara, I've actually used this a couple of times already and I really like it. This is the Kiko Maxi Mod Mascara, it's the one that I said had the real little wand on it so it's meant to be able to get right into the roots and grab every hair and it really does I really really enjoy this mascara so I'm definitely glad I picked this one up I mean oh, look at the difference that is incredible I just absolutely love this mascara, there's a huge difference in like the look on my lashes, I mean I do, I am someone that does have long-ish lashes anyway but that mascara is amazing, I'm just going to do the lower lash line because this is what this is real perfect for, really perfect for on this eye, so you just can see the comparison between the both eyes with and without the mascara so that's the lower lash line coat as well, and it literally just gets every lash, even the ones that get right in the corners, it's sometimes a bit hard to get to, and like, I don't worry about accidentally touching the lid or whatever like that because it's such a small brush, and it just, okay so that's mascara done for both eyes and I think you can agree there is no need for false eyelashes here, okay so that's the eye portion done so like I said the palettes I am planning on using videos soon and also I did pick up these colourful liners as well which will be incorporated into some Christmas looks so don't worry um, moving on to the face now I've actually got a lot less face products than I did everything else I only really got the foundation concealer so oh which again I haven't had a chance to try um, I am just going to bronze up my skin with uh, a different product because I actually don't own a bronzer in my Kiko collection anyway. So I'm going to be going in with the Barry M Afterglow Light Bronzer, um, which is just a lovely bronze bronzer. Now um, I didn't pick up a new 
blusher but I do have a couple of existing blushes from Kiko um, I'm going to go in with this one because I haven't used it for a while this is their Kiko Blending Wave Multicolor Blush in 01 I believe it's one of their limited edition ones so I don't think they have it anymore now another product I don't have from Kiko is a highlighter which seems pretty crazy but I saw who did I see do this potentially it could be Rachel Leary I'm not sure but one of the eyeshadows I did pick up was ah, first one I got. So I did pick up some of their long lasting wet and dry use eyeshadows. So I got a really beautiful rose gold, grey, black, blue one which I am going to be using soon. And I also picked up this beautiful gold. And I'm sure I saw, it may not have been her, I used this as a highlighter. So I'm going to do that. More of a sheen kind of finish to it. Oh look at that. That works beautifully as a highlighter. These two. Cupid's bow. I take a little bit above the brows as well. Really nicely as a highlighter. I'm not sure why I haven't got a highlighter from Kiko because I do love my highlighters, so it seems a bit mad, but I know that I can now use this. Okay, on two lips. I didn't pick up that many lip products from Kiko when I did that um, haul, so I did get one lip liner, so I used that. This is the Everlasting Colour Precision Lip Liner in 403, which is kind of a brown, new, it's a brownie nude colour, um, so I'm just going to, I haven't tried this one out yet. So as you probably could have seen, that glide on really smoothly and it's retractable as well, which I like. So that's a really lovely um, lip line. I'm just going to fill in a ever so slightly on the outer corners. Now, and the other lip products I got were these um, new th um, products from Kiko. They're an unlimited double touch lip products. Now, admittedly, I have used these already. I've actually tried out all three colours because this is the, my go-to one. This is the... Um, 120 because it comes with the colour and top coat so basically you pop it on and it's a really beautiful pigmented colour this one not so much this is very streaky I find um, which is quite typical I can find for really light nudes but you pop it all on lovely it's very pigmented you then put, go on the top coat so it creates this really glossy lip then throughout because I tried it for an evening look and throughout the night the gloss disappeared as I was eating and stuff but the colour stayed, so the gloss doesn't stay but I don't think it's meant to stay I think it's meant just to help set the lip product so I absolutely love this um, so I'm going to go in my favourite one this is one to oh like I said which is very brown and nude with a hint in the bottle it looks like it's got a hint of shimmer in it but it doesn't really translate onto the lips um, and yeah and it comes like a doe for applicator, so it's really, really easy to apply. They have like a vanilla scent, which I quite like. So as you saw that, it applied so easily, and it's just a beautiful kind of colour. You can always get away with this in the daytime, which I have done. Um, but like I said, the I will go on the top in a minute. This one it is extremely streaky. So actually, um, I still use it, but I use it to create like the ombre lip look. Apply top coat. So as you can see, that's turned it glossy now. So that's the top coat on. And actually the formula of the top coat isn't sticky at all, which is really nice. It's a really comfortable formula. And the idea is just meant to set the lip in place so it just lasts that little bit longer. That is the makeup look itself complete. First time I tried out these eyeshadows, so you've got the high pigment, the smart and the duo baked ones. And they're all really lovely, the ones that I've tried so far. Obviously I've got a whole bunch of like other colours that I haven't yet tried but if the formula is the same then I know I'm going to like them so like I said I will be using a whole bunch of this throughout this month 
when I'm doing my Christmas looks and stuff just to really um, play around with them but I love the look of this um, I really loved the products there isn't a product that I've put on that I've hated um, I'm really enjoying this fan this foundation has gone on really nicely in comparison like I said the skin tone one not a huge fan of maybe I'll play around with it to see if I can get it to work. I can't see a real difference between the primed and the non-primed side. Like I said, there was a little bit, um, surprisingly, on the primed side of a little bit caking here and here. Um, but I managed to like, buff it out a bit more and it seemed to be okay. Now, um, nothing's creasing under the eyes yet. I mean, I did set it, but sometimes, even if I set certain concealers, I can find they do start to a little bit um, go into the lines. Um, I know the lip product I love, I've used it several times and the mascara is amazing, definitely don't need false lashes um, and actually the eye base as well, like I said the pearly one, I'm not sure of the point of the pearly one because I don't think it really translated through, um, it definitely helped make the eyeshadows glide on nicely and blend out nicely but I think you could just use the neutral one for that, you didn't really need, I don't know, um, the point, maybe if you had like glitters it would be quite a good adhesive um, if you pop that on first without setting it and then pop like a uh, loose glitter on there maybe that would be a great way this lip liner, beautiful and creamy and um, what else have I got on me yeah the blush obviously is one I already had and stuff like that but yeah so I really enjoyed the makeup that I purchased 